Hi everyone, thanks for joining me. Spellbinders has a new collection through the Arbor. It is absolutely gorgeous. Today's card features a beautiful wildflower called Queen Anne's Lace. With the exception of the ladybug, which I did not use for this card, the other three dies have a number etched on them which indicate how many times to die cut that plate. I started off by cutting the little flowers. The die indicated to cut it six to seven times. I did it seven times and I had just a few left over. These little flowers are easily shaped with the smallest ball tool. What I found to be the most time consuming part was actually just laying these flowers out, getting the die cuts right side up on the foam shaping mat. I picked the flowers up with the jewel picker, which certainly made it a lot easier. And when everything was laid out, I took a YG63 green Copic marker, put a dot of green in the middle of each flower, and then just took that ball tool and depressed it in the center of each one. I'm pretty sure I had to load up that mat three times, and that is a lot of little tiny flowers. But obviously there's nothing difficult about this and it is relaxing and easy to do. I'm using Susan's Garden Ultimate Toolkit. It contains absolutely everything that you need for your flower shaping needs. Now this is where the fun begins. There is a small and large base to which the flowers will be adhered to. The die cuts one of each and it was die cut two times so that altogether there are four bases. I found it easiest to take my adhesive and place it along one of the branches fairly thickly but avoiding that central area of the base. And then using a jewel picker, I'm able to easily pick up each of these dainty little flowers and pop them onto the adhesive. After looking at this little mountain of flowers, I thought that it was going to take a lot longer than it actually did to adhere the flowers to the bases. And of course, there's a lot of motivation when you start seeing it come together. It is just so beautiful. And so in case you're wondering if I get glue on my glass mat, yes, I absolutely do. Oftentimes I can't actually even see the glue that is dried onto the mat, so I'll run my hand over it. Routinely I'll use a glass cleaning blade to remove it. This affordable little tool that I picked up at the hardware store does a good job without leaving any scratches. As I'm working on adding all of those little flowers to the four bases, I'm not having to be concerned about getting glue on my mat. I now have two medium and two large bases with flowers on the front. And yep, I'm adding them on the back as well. I'll only add them to one large and two medium bases. Second largest base will be the foundation for the flower and needs to be flat on one side so that it can be adhered to the card front. Before I do this, I let the other grouping of flowers completely dry. Why bother adding the flowers to the back of those other three bases? First of all, this is a very dimensional flower, and when it goes together, you don't want to see the bare underside of these three layers. Probably more importantly, the additional flowers help to add a lightness. Flowers on the underside help to prop up each of those branches, giving that overall lacy appearance. Before the flower is assembled, I let it dry completely. Start off with that base layer that does not have the flowers on the back of it, on the foam shaping mat and using a medium sized ball tool to press it in the center. The second large layer is depressed in the center and then glue is added to the first one, a fairly good dollop of glue. And then that second layer can be placed on top, making sure that it is offset. I'm just pressing it in the center with the ball tool until the glue sets up. 
Then I can move on to my smaller layer, depressing it in the center and adding a good amount of glue to the center of the partially assembled flower and inserting this layer again, offsetting it and holding it in place with the ball tool. And then I'll follow that same procedure, inserting the last small layer of flowers. And when the final layer is in place, there is going to be a little bit of green in the center of the flower. I have a few extra flowers, so I'm going to fill that in. And I think I only had to add four. And I cut more leaves than I needed out of that green cardstock that was used on the base layers for the flower. Sticking with that same Copic marker, the YG63, that was used to put a dot of green in the center of all of the flowers, I'm just going to add some details to these leaves and darken up the central stem. I'll also be incorporating three leafy stems from the Victorian foliage die set. This is not black cardstock, it's a dark green. The stem with the rounded leaves, I'm using the ball tool on the back and just making a circular motion to give it some shape. For the other two leafy branches, which are the same, I'll take that smallest ball tool and just draw a vein in the center then take my fine detail tweezers, place them at the base of each of the leaves, and then squeeze upwards. Using Distress Oxide inks on Bristol Smooth cardstock to create the background. I've got my panel upside down, but the chip sapphire, that dark blue, is actually going to be placed where the flower will sit on the bottom left-hand corner of the panel. I'll continue working in a diagonal with my next color, which is Peacock Feathers. And then I'll finish up with one of my favorite colors and flavors actually, Cracked Pistachio. For the first layer, I'm just getting my color mapped out. Then when I go in and add subsequent ink, it actually glides on much more easily with an ink base. I've just grabbed a piece of scrap cardstock so that I can hold my panel and avoid getting fingerprints on it. To create a nice, smooth, blended background, I probably add three to four layers of ink, extending one color into the next with each application. And so right now you can see a very distinct line of definition between the peacock feathers and the cracked pistachio, with additional cracked pistachio being added on and extended into the peacock feathers, it blends it out. And I'm just checking out my layout and now I'm going to do some spattering. I'm just adding in some black watercolor paint using a fan brush. The panel was trimmed down to four by five and a quarter inches and then adhered to an A2 sized black top folding card base. And again, I'm just checking out the layout, but this time with the sentiment, which is from Fresh Picked Sentiments. The word bloom was die cut from the dark green cardstock and black sheet foam. The cardstock word is adhered to the foam die cut. And now I know exactly where I want it on my card front so I can pop that in place. The three sets of leaves are going to be adhered by applying the liquid adhesive down the central stem only. The Queen Anne's Lace Flower is definitely a statement piece. I'm going to use a good amount of glue to adhere it to that bottom left-hand corner. I'll just give it a couple of minutes for that glue to start setting up before I start adding in the leaves. Because the adhesive was applied to the central part of the base, I'm able to easily slip those leaves under the clusters of flowers. And now I have them more or less laid out. I can pull them out and put some adhesive on the back and then slip them back into place. I like to do my placement in groupings. So at the top of the flower, I'll have two leaves slightly overlapping one another. 
And then on the bottom right hand side of the flower, I'll take three leaves and overlap those. And even though the sentiment was foam backed, I felt that it was getting a little bit lost with those dark leaves. So I die cut it again out of gold glitter cardstock and I'm offsetting it onto the sentiment. And I love to add embellishments to my cards. I did have a few of those little tiny blooms left over, so I thought, what the heck, I'll use those as my embellishments. And I think that this looks quite natural. Oftentimes, these tiny blooms that make up the cluster of the flower will fall off and scatter. I tucked them in around the flower and the leaves, treating it in the very same way I would if I was working with confetti or crystals. And that wraps up this card featuring the gorgeous Queen Anne's Lace die set from Spellbinders through the Arbor Collection. I hope you enjoyed this video and as always, I appreciate your visit.